Hello, dear ones. You're listening to the What God Is Not podcast with Father Michael O'Loughlin and Mother Natalia. Hello, listeners. Today is Mother Natalia's episode, and she is still recovering and reflecting upon an experience of an escape room that we were able to do together in person uh, the night before this recording. Uh, we reflect upon the difference between men and women, especially when it comes to fear and uh, analyzing escape rooms, I guess. This is basically a conversation. It is either all banter or no banter. Um, we also talk about priest wives running into walls and a spiritual father's half-hearted rescue of his spiritual daughter. So like I said, this is either all banter or no banter. So you choose if you want to skip ahead or not. Glory to Jesus Christ. Glory, Glory forever. So many voices. Uh, one of those, Father Michael's adjusting a mic. One of those was very loud. <laughs> to me? It was Father Michael's. No, oh. Was <laughs> <laughs> um, th- th- that was really great when we were hanging out with someone yesterday and you were you were sharing something and she's just like, your voice is very deep. I can't hear anything you just said. <laughs> it was just like one continuous. That was really great. I appreciated that. Is that a thing? Deep voices can't be heard? I don't know. I guess. Yeah. Okay. That's a Makes thing. more sense than Cowboy like high saying voices. that's a thing. Welcome, cowboy. We have the actual cowboy here, not just the squirrel. Yes, hello. Thank you. Vaquero is also what we call him. And, and then we have Valeria. <laughs> hello. Uh, Maddie. Hello. Father Nathan Simeon. Greetings. Uh, Father Nathan is Father Michael's former assistant at St. Mary's Cathedral. Uh, Proto-Cathedral. Sorry. Oh. <laughs> Awkward. <laughs> um <laughs> Were you going to, you said that you wanted, were you going to introduce all them? I'm really sorry no, if I just stole I wasn't, your... I asked you to. Okay, great. I wasn't really listening it's very your, well. It's your day, your topic. It's my day. Do whatever I want. Um, so we're all hanging out, visiting Father Nathan, Father Michael, myself, three of Father Nathan Simeon's former parishioners are visiting Father Nathan and his family. And so we're hanging out for the day and recording a couple podcast episodes. Um, we probably don't need to banter because we're... Trying to do a short episode. We so. never need to banter. Yeah. What I meant to say, <laughs> when I, all the banter haters are like, yes, thank you. Um, what I meant to say is we probably shouldn't banter. Yeah, we got to be shorter. Um, which is good because I can't think of a single banter topic right now. So that's great. Teasing's all of our love language. So it would just become a big, like, make fun of each other fest. Yeah. That actually might be something to keep in mind for this whole episode is that <laughs> if we mock one another, it's because we deeply love each yeah. other and not because we, the opposite of that. <laughs> so there's that. Oh, there's hugs going on right now. It's real cute. Um, okay. So what I wanted to share, Father Nathan Simeon has never heard um, the podcast, I don't think. And so he doesn't realize how incredibly awkward I am, other than you already know that from real life. <laughs> I got some experience of that <laughs> firsthand. <laughs> um, yeah, never mind. Uh, so what I'd like to share is an experience that we had last night um, that just like broke open a huge, fascinating conversation. Uh, and so Maddie, Valeria, and Cowboy went to an escape room. And Father Michael, myself, Father Nathan, Father Nathan's wife, Allie, and then another... another Subdeacon David. (laughs) Subdeacon David. He's a subdeacon? Yes. I didn't realize that. And Letizia, his girlfriend. Subdeacon David and Letizia um, also went to a different escape room. So the six of us were in one escape room, and then the three of them were in another. And this, uh, the escape room... So the six of us... Letizia had been to one before. David, Subdeacon David had never been to... No, he had been to a no, no, he had to be quiet. Okay, yes. So he had been to them. Letizia had only been to one. The other four of us who were in this particular escape room had never been to an escape room. Is that right? Yes, but but because Father Michael did so well, I have to point out he did play video games with escape (laughs) (laughs) rooms. Because otherwise it just makes me feel bad about myself. So I want to point out. Shout out to all the Myst players. M-Y-S-T. There's this old PC game called Myst. And and it, it's kind of like probably the the forerunner of escape rooms. It, it's it's you 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 walk around a world and you find little puzzles to get you to the next 
part of that world. So I had done that before. So is that cheating? I had still never no, been with escape room. It's not cheating. It just mean, makes me feel better because you did so much better to me than me <laughs> to know you had some kind of previous experience. That's just totally reflecting on my own ego issues. I also really love <laughs> riddles. And I think the one that you were most impressed with was the heaven and hell one. The dist- was that the first thing when we were in the room and I no, switched No, I was most impressed when you finished one thing and then like jumped across the room and did another thing and I was like, well, hold on, what happened with the first thing? <laughs> like, that's not fair. If he's already working on the second thing, well, I'm still... And, like, and then I was over like trying to figure out this thing on my own that the woman whispered in my ear so I should have known how to do it. And I wanted to like, pull it. we did it. And then David came over and had to finish it. And then Natalia and I was like, ah, I'm not good at this. So I realized by the end of the day, I'm not very good at this. It is not my skill set. So we've now introduced the episode, which this whole topic is about unpacking um, Father Nathan Simeon's insecurities. So. <laughs> I'm sure I'm always willing to put them on I time. didn't tell you that's no. what we were talking about. So, no. This is an kidding. intervention. <laughs> this is an intervention. Thank you all for that. Um, Maddie is studying counseling, so she's that's why we brought her on. Thank you, Maddie. I didn't know this was this is what you why you guys wanted me on this episode. <laughs> How rude. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Done in private. (laughs) Jeez. Uh, We need the numbers. Okay. So the just kidding. What we're actually talking about is the fact that um, the entire time in the escape room, I was on the brink of either crying or throwing up. (laughs) So that's the real topic. So we're in this escape room, and uh, I won't go. For any of you who don't know what an escape room is, it's literally that. Like you're in some sort of like set up staged house or something, um, some sort of, or a log cabin or whatever. And you're trying to get out by solving all of these different little puzzles in the, in the thing you're trying to escape. Um, and they have different, uh, like plots. What's the word I'm looking for? Themes. Yeah. Yeah. And so the one that we were in was so scary. It was so scary. And every once in a while, like they had live actors in the room. And every once in a while, one of the actors would come into the room and they never broke character. Like, oh man, I, they were just so good at what they do. And they would come in while we're trying to figure out a puzzle and they would come in very quietly. And then from right behind us, just scream. Uh, and it was just... My whole body would tense up and I would scream or I'd yell out or something. And <laughs> uh, and what was fascinating about this is Allie, again, that's Father Nathan Simeon's wife, Allie, Letizia, and I are all terrified, right? And so we're like at the center of the group um, at any point, whenever we move into a new room or something like that, we just stay in the center and we make the guys kind of be in the front and the back and the side <laughs> and <laughs> every, every time. And cause there were halls and there were tight spaces and there was, it was very scary. It's very scary. It was very dark and there was lots of scary things. And, um, and then the guys were on the outside. So Allie, Letizia and I were all just terrified and, sometimes kind of maybe crying, not actually crying, but like wanting to. And then um, just, yeah. While the guys were laughing and and not like laughing at us. Well, if you were laughing at us, I don't know that. And you don't have to tell me that because I'm already feeling really embarrassed. But they weren't laughing at us, but just like at the whole situation, right? And like laughing at the actors and laughing at these scenes that we were walking into that are scaring everything within the women. And um, so every time there was like, a door that was about to open or something like that, we would always be like, Father Michael, open the door. Father Nathan, open the door. David, open the door. Like the women would do nothing. We were so afraid of initiating any of these things that were scaring us. Um, and at the people running in and screaming. Can um, I for the laughter or no? Yeah. Or do we wait? Yeah, no, okay. please speak. So, yeah. so for me, just, just for clarification. <laughs> You're like, no, 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 for clarification, I was entirely laughing. <laughs> no, 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 no. This is, this is actually an important distinction because when you're, when you're young, uh, when you're a young guy, you might laugh to like prove 
you're not afraid. So we're uh, back to Father Nathan's right, insecurities. But, <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm so self-centered. Um, no, but I, but I really, but I don't think any of that was going on. We weren't trying to like laugh at, because because we wanted to be respectful too. Yeah, and not like be a jerk about it because yeah. we're thankful that we were that we were allowed to go to do this. Mm-hmm. I was I was genuinely, and maybe you could speak to the same thing. I was genuinely laughing at the joy I was having at seeing you guys um, <laughs> screaming. Yeah, but it, but I but I genuinely also didn't think you were afraid. I thought you guys were having fun, oh, like yeah. a little bit nervous, <laughs> and so that was my. I'm just pointing out, like that was my reaction. Wasn't that you were genuinely afraid but more like when a spider is like on a wall and, a, and that girl jumps or something uh-huh. like ah it's funny because they got a little bit nervous that there was a spider on the wall <laughs> that's what I'm thinking that's what I'm, I'm not laughing at you or at what I'm seeing in the room uh, I'm, it's more just kind of enjoying yeah. what, what you guys are doing see I, I was definitely I was laughing at a few different things I was laughing at how good the actors were so we had these facilitators these two girls who were dressed the part for like so our, our escape room was supposed to be hell and we're, we're trying to get out of hell so and by the way this, this may sound odd but the, the person the woman who organized created the whole thing in every aspect of it is, is a very very devout Byzantine Catholic and she's a very good friend of ours and which she's is a how very good happens. friend of ours like, exactly yeah. so she created this and I, even our, our wristbands that we got of ours it says um, overcome evil with good so we get these wristbands so she, she wrote this to be a kind of a witness um, not over the top because it's it's very public, it's very secular, but a witness to the evils of hell and the fact that that we want to not go there, right? So that that's and kind what of, it's like to confront our own sin and have yes. to face it and to have to speak these things and yeah. So she wrote, but I, I do want to say that with the laughing. So part of it was that these these two girls were so good. I mean, they were the, so the good. one of like, like my mother said, they never broke character. This one this one girl had her her hair like kind of falling in front of her face. I don't know if it was a wig or not. But she had her hair falling on her face. And, and from the moment you walk in there, she greets you in character. Mm-hmm. And then and then the whole time, but she was so, and she's making these sounds with her mouth, these high-pitched screeches that, 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 that I couldn't, like just her, the both of theirs, but especially the first one, her engagement with the atmosphere of the escape room was so good that I was like, I was entertained by, by the, the theme going on. And I, w- I would kind of laugh at just how... How good? Because I, th- I think they were better than the like created atmosphere. Like yeah. their parts added something immense to it. Um, I was also though laughing, and I, I I don't I'm still processing and unpacking this. I was laughing at you guys, like freaking <laughs> out. I was, but it wasn't a. I don't think it was the same thing as you, Father Nathan. I wasn't laughing. I kind of knew <laughs> they were having a rough time, but it took a while. It took a while for me to do that because. There was something about the way that you guys were like screaming, and and I, I this sounds sad, but you were kind of cowering, right? Cower- oh, totally cowering. You, you were totally cowering. Cowering, yes, but, falling back, trying to like be in any corners that were away from doors. Didn't like, my absolutely wife cowering. like run into a wall? <laughs> Yeah. That, that she did. At one point, she was like, someone comes running down the hall and she's so scared that she turns to run and just turns and just flat smacks into a, into a wall. Yeah. So, so I, I was kind of laughing, but I wasn't laughing in any way because, okay, so like I was laughing at, at your guys' emotional reaction, but it, I, I wasn't laughing at you in any way that I would have felt at all offensive because I figured you, you'd be laughing at yourself. Like if you could see yourself and then after all this was over, you'd be like, oh my gosh, that was so scary. I was freaking out. I was running into walls. I was I was hiding behind anybody who I could hide behind, you know? Because um, even in the very beginning, like mother, you were standing to my left and then like the girl came in, the actress, and she came to like turn the TV and you just like switched sides immediately. Yeah. The girl hadn't even said anything yet. It was just yeah. the way she looked like this is how good it was <laughs> but but I, I was kind of laughing at you guys because I knew you'd be laughing at yourself eventually or maybe even right then mm-hmm. there, there was, I certainly didn't yeah, mind any right sort then. of offense that's not true actually every time every time things calm down for just a second then I could kind of let out this like <laughs> distressed sort of like Stress relief. <laughs> and Cause, laugh cause at myself. Leticia then. never smiled, but she also never like showed fear. Yeah. Her we, eyes got big. Her eyes, yeah. I did notice her eyes got big. <laughs> we only found out later that, that she was scared at all. Yeah. Right. And yeah. then and then you 
mother, like you had a, I mean, so at one point, Father Nathan, David, and I, oh, I think, so I think the facilitators knew this. So they locked the three of us in this tiny space that was really hot. The three men. The three men, locked all three men in this tiny little space and had the three women trying to solve a puzzle. And while like scare, scaring them and terrifying them more than they ever were throughout the rest of the game. Yeah. So, so we were locked in there and I remember, and I think, what did you say, Father Nathan? You said to me like, I think that Mother Natalia is... You, you, that you, she actually thinks we're afraid. Is that what you're talking no, no, about? No, 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 no. You, you, you thought that she wasn't actually. She oh, was yeah, yeah, yeah. That's on. right. When we had that conversation. Yeah. yeah so, yeah. so Father Nathan said to me, like, I think, I think Mother's just putting this on. And, and I, I didn't quite. Okay. You, you made me sound a little bit off there. Okay. What I, <laughs> well, okay. What I, what I said was. We're back to Father Nathan. Fa- no, 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 hold on. <laughs> hold on. Hold on. Just for clarification. Just for clarification. Father Michael actually said, okay, I feel like I failed my paternal instinct to some extent yeah. by, letting, by letting, by letting, by letting, by letting mother get locked in that room. Yeah. And I was like, no way. I totally let my wife get locked in that room. <laughs> and, and, and I go, I don't think she's really afraid. I think she's just like, she's a ham. Okay, she's putting yeah. it on a little bit. That's what you said. And Father Mike was like, no way. She's really afraid. No, I was, like, I was so afraid. Yeah. yeah. I, I remember thinking like, I've never seen this. I've known her for 10 years. I've never seen this side of her where, where 12 years. <laughs> <laughs> like, where, well, like it's like 11 and a half. Okay. Sorry. Okay. Keep going. It's where I, I didn't quite know what to do. So <laughs> like the first person to get separated from the group and locked in a tiny room and the door slammed on you was, was mother Natalia. Oh, it was so scary. So yeah. the girl comes in and she hands mother, she opens the door tells mother to get inside this door that looks like a coffin standing up. There's not a lot of room in there. And then I pulls this wand out of it and hands mother this wand. Now, I had never seen a look on her face that was that I had to go from like thinking she's having fun to thinking that she's terrified. <laughs> so at one point I like tried to get in the way and I kind of went to grab the wand like let me do this, but she wasn't having it. Like the girl was not going to give yeah. me the wand. No, and she could tell that I was scared and she wanted this yeah, to be me. She yeah. wanted you to be scared. And so, so she put you in there and then, and then you go in there. I'm looking for the back. Like I'm like, there must be a trap door back there or something where mother's going to go out. And then she slams the door. And I don't know if you heard me. I yelled like right away. I was like, mother, you okay? As soon as the girl oh, walked away, yeah. uh-huh. I was like, mother, you okay? And then I heard you say like, I'm just whatever. And then you said something that made me think, yes, she's scared, but she's okay. Yeah. And then all of a sudden I saw you start playing the puzzle. And uh-huh. I was like, that's what this is. They're separating us so that one person plays the puzzle from one side us and the other. Yeah. And then I was fine. Uh-huh. But but I remember like we got in there, you were <laughs> fine. We, we did get into the small room and I thought, I, I felt like I had failed something a little bit just because of the look on your face. Again, a look I had never seen before of like, please don't do this but I to the girl, but I will do this if you're going to insist, yeah. you know, type thing. I don't uh-huh. know how to describe that. But it was after that where, to go back to my original story, like Letizia was showing very little emotion. Mother Natalia was kind of showing this nervous fear, but still like, I'm still in the game. I'm still playing. I'm still going to follow this through. Whereas your oh, yeah. wife- I didn't step back from any puzzle, right? Yeah, no, like, you didn't. We did all of the things. Yeah, yeah, you didn't. We did all the things. And then and then your wife, Father Nathan, like she had this look <laughs> of was like- running into walls. She, but, but she had this look of pure glee. Like she was <laughs> freaking out, but she had this big smile on her face the entire time. She did. Okay. Yeah. 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 And it was like, so like, but it was just so weird to observe the the three of you and then like look around and David just who, who I know had done it before he was like trying to help us without helping us mm-hmm. for certain things I was like he's he's just on his head right now he was almost bored yeah he was he definitely looked quite bored which he's probably even done that escape room before oh, so he probably yeah. knows them all yeah. but I did I did notice when when the, when they pulled the Tizia away I think he went with her so he, oh, I, he did. Yeah, I yeah, think he right. went with mm-hmm. her so mm-hmm. he like in, maybe he insisted and that's maybe why when I got I got pulled away for, for a well, puzzle. and they surely know him too, honestly. Yeah, they probably do. But yeah. when I got pulled away, then they put the two of us, mother and I, yeah. in the back room to do the puzzle behind. Uh-huh. And I'm wondering if they did that because then they were worried for you uh-huh. or something like that. Yeah, like, let's, let's put someone with her. Anyway, whatever it was. Um, so anyway, th- so the laughing, the laughing, I forget what the third thing I was going to say about the laughing, but the laughing was definitely a, I'm laughing at like how well done the actors were. Uh-huh. And then I was kind of laughing at you guys because I knew you'd be laughing at yourselves later on. Yeah, it was really interesting because in that last moment where, so it was towards the end that the three of you, <clears throat> the three of you were put into this, what do you call it? Like this like cubby hole yeah. thing. I mean, Anyways. We had to sit down. You couldn't stand up. We yeah. had to sit down. Like it, it was and so it, small. It, like not it only <laughs> barely fit three of us. And like 
Yeah. And we're all you three are guys. not. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so that's funny. I was going to say the opposite. That we're all big guys. <laughs> yeah. Well, he's got big muscles. I have a big well, head. Well, I'm thinking you're not like. <laughs> That's true. Um, <laughs> no, not here to defend himself. Okay, no, I guess you're all you're all like average size men. Anyways, whatever. I'm so, def- no. <laughs> 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 right. So when they so when we get to this last room, so up, up to this point, up to this point, they're intentionally like they're preying on our fear, right? Like yes. because it's adding to the game and yes. I get that. And and it's very clear throughout all of this that that this is all not real, right? Like we know this in our heads. Um but now we're getting to the core of the podcast. Yes. This was what she's saying right here. Yes. So are we like 20 minutes in? You could usually yeah. take this long to get to the topic. 1935. I mean, yes. this is all the context. <laughs> this is all the context for the right. the episode though. Right. Uh but well, bef- so so what was interesting is it was towards the end that that y'all were put in the little cubby, and up to that point they'd been singling out the the women um, because they knew that we were so afraid. And so when we get to the end and they pull Father Nathan and put him into the cubby, I'm like, oh, ha ha, it's his turn. <laughs> and then they put David with him, and I'm like, oh yeah, this is so great. And then they pull Father Michael, and I'm Subject like, and David, by the way. Something Only because David. I know Sorry. you want to, want to say that. Um, and then they put in Father Michael, and I'm like, ha ha, <gasps> we're alone. Um, and then I realize that they've now taken all the men away from us and put them into a cubby hole, and the men can't get out unless we solve this puzzle. <laughs> and so that was very um, scary. Uh, and then we had to, so the three of us just like held hands to go down the hole. <laughs> Anyways. Um, but yes, so the core of it is this opened up this fascinating conversation last night because I'm, I'm really embarrassed by how last night as we're having the conversation, I'm so embarrassed by how scared I am um, or how scared I was, especially because like, I don't like, I'm the one at the monastery who the nuns know will do all of the things. Right. And like, I'll go cliff jumping or I'll go rock climbing or all like, I, um, I have actually probably an unhealthy fearlessness when it comes to like physical danger. But but in this escape room, every part of me was so scared. And Father Nathan and Father Michael were, um, and then in talking with, sorry, in talking with the woman that we were saying, like, put together this whole thing, um, she was sharing that this is how it always goes. Not like almost always, right? Vast majority of the time, the women are panicked and the men are just like enjoying themselves and amused. And so Father Michael and Father Nathan are both kind of just like baffled by what was happening Mm -hmm. in us. And at one point, Father Nathan says to me last night, he's like, but I don't understand because you knew it was all fake. Like you knew in your head that it was fake. And so why were you afraid? Like what, why? And, And I think that part of it is... Um, part of it is that there's, I think in some sense, I want to be really careful here how I say this, but in a, in a generalized way, I think that we experienced, um, our experience in the escape room was like a microcosm of this generalization of a difference between men and women, men and women. And, that's the conversation that Father Michael and I had on the drive to Father Nathan and Allie's house after the escape room is Father Michael's like, why was it so different? Why was it such a different experience? And and you were even sharing like, you and Father Nathan, I think both wished you could kind of enter into it the way that we did. Um, I remember thinking this will be, this will be more entertaining if I actually imagined that we were really in a scary place trying to get out. Like for instance, me and my brothers, when we were kids, we'd play Nerf guns and, and rubber band guns, but it wasn't scary enough. So we said, what do we do to actually make our war games hurt? Because if they don't hurt, then we won't be able to experience the fear of like, I don't want you to hit me with that thing. So we literally just took socks. We were like 10 and eight. We took socks and, and put a bunch of sand in the bottom and then wrapped duct tape around it to make it, I keep all the sand in one place. And then we just throw these socks with sand in the bottom of duct tape. And so if you get hit with that, like it, it's going to leave a bruise. It's going to hurt. So our war games that we played outside around the neighborhood 
it was a little trying to say if I get hit, like you could even hit the guy with it holding it, and it would it would hurt. I mean, it would kind of take you, knock your feet out from underneath you. But we 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 liked that because we wanted to say now we actually are kind of testing ourselves. There's a real fear of real injury here, and so we this is more real, and it's not just playing with Nerf guns, but we're actually kind of being able to experience what that fear looks like and how we react in times like this. <clears throat> yeah. So I was sorry. So we wanted, I, I wished I had been able to put myself a little bit more in the, in the experience of what they were trying. Like they were trying to get us to be afraid and startled and, and worried. And I, I, I was like, well, I, I wish I'd been able to better do that in a sense. And I mean, speaking to what mother's talking about, I, um, in, re in regards to her reaction of it and why it was real. Yeah. Why, why, regardless of the real life circumstances, her emotions were saying, or her instincts yeah. were saying, this is real. Yeah. This, this needs a real response. And that, that's what I was so baffled with yesterday. And then I was trying to kind of create an alternative reality that matched kind of the man's experience, what might make us experience it as real. And so I thought, and, and maybe you could just process this question, mm. you know, what if, what if, um, instead, a bunch of guys ran in the room and started like pretending to slug the girls or mm. something. Like started yeah. pretending to punch them. Yeah. Right. <laughs> but I, I Versus think, like a little scary girl that yeah. we know, okay, you're not scary. Right. You're not, <laughs> right. you're, right. I almost dropped an elbow on her head because she walked <laughs> under my arm. She's so small. Yeah. Right. The, the, the woman who was trying to take If I had had the same experience that I had when they first put mother in the box, like the, the thing about the thing about the very beginning was that mother was the first to be pulled out and, and separated out. And when the girl slammed the door, I saw the fear. That's what made me first think. And then that, then the girl slammed the door. Like there was something. If that had continued throughout, but it, you really can't imitate that again. But if I had known, if I had been to an escape room before and knew that they did that, I wouldn't have had nearly the same reaction. Mm -hmm. But it was, I didn't know they did that. Yeah. And so I was like, oh my gosh, but I think you're completely right. Like, there's nothing setting off our fight, yeah. flight, or freeze response. Right. Yeah. There was just, there was nothing there, but you could create an alternative reality, even if it was totally false, that would set that off. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Which that yeah. so that's really interesting because as you were speaking, Father Nathan, I was thinking that is the one moment that I know that you had even like the slightest reaction yeah. or something, Father Michael, was when I so that's that's really interesting. Like I think you're onto something there. Mother showed us her stress levels on her from her watch. Yeah. And I remember thinking like if I had been wearing one, it would have been very interesting to see. It yeah. probably would have spiked then, but then kind of just stayed at normal level. Yeah. Um but the uh what was I gonna say? Oh, so anyways, I I proposed something to Father Michael as we're talking about this difference between men and women and why the generally, again, there are exceptions to this, which I'd love to hear Maddie's thoughts on this because Maddie is the exception to this and Maddie is like fearless in these things. Um, <laughs> so I'm not saying that this is every woman. I want to be very clear about that. But in a generalized sort of way, this is the the case of the difference between men and women. And, um, and I'm sure if we like contact escape rooms across the country, that's what they're going to say, right? And... And likewise, I'm sure there are men who go into escape rooms who are afraid. And so I, I don't mean that this is everybody. But I think that there's something about, you know, our monastery, we've talked about this on the podcast a lot, but like our monastery is super into theology of the body. And like, which which is not, St. John Paul II's teaching on theology of the body is not just about sexuality. In fact, that's not even like primarily what it's about, right? There's much, much, much more in the Wednesday audiences that are about like, anthropology and um, and how yeah the differences in the complementarities and stuff between men and women um, apart from from only uh, like the sexual differences so anyways it is sexual differences but I don't know I'm not being clear with my language anyways I'm gonna move on the I think there's something to be said for the fact that this is what I said to Father Michael last night like thousands of years ago um, if there's some sort of attack on um a family or something from some wild animal, if the woman jumped out ahead of the family to fight off this animal, there is just objectively 
a smaller chance of overcoming the animal than if the man did it, right? Because like of physical because strength. of physical strength, right? Um, like men are just objectively physically stronger than women, right? This is the we've talked about this before on the podcast about how infuriating it is to me that I can I can weight lift for months. And then arm wrestle Father Michael, who has worked out twice in his life, once with Father Nathan. Um, and he just crushes me without even trying um, after I weight lift for months. And it's so infuriating. And which like there are certainly women out there who could beat Father Michael in arm wrestling. Yeah. I'm going to put that out there. But <laughs> um, but not me. Like, I don't think I would ever be capable. My my body is just not like, yeah. So So anyways, I think that there's something in like this is a gift of the interior state of man and woman that provides for what we need to be the exterior. So what I mean by that is like, in a general sense, the women are more afraid of those things so that they don't have the impulse to jump out and to do the saving. And they, in fact, jump behind the man, cower, as Father Michael <laughs> pointed out. It was accurate. I cowered. <laughs> um, so that the the man jumps out and does the protecting of which he's more physically capable, um, again, in general. Uh, so that was my, my thought on that, which I do have um, a scripture thing that I want to talk about. But if you guys have anything you want to say about that before I do that, that's fine. We were talking last night um, because it's th- there's there's obviously exceptions and things like that. But even 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 in the natural world, like uh, a mama bear is what you're the most afraid of when you're walking through the forest. Now, again, probably because you know papa bears aren't necessarily with the kids. You know the mom the the female moms are and the the dads aren't. So it may be different. Maybe a cultural thing. Well, where the kids are hanging around mom, and that's why you either one of them would rip your head off. You know, but 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 they 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 happen to be in 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 bear culture. Um, they they hang they hang around the mom. <laughs> um, bear culture. Um, so, like bear cultures. See, I, I like this mother. Like when we have more people, they more people laugh at my jokes <laughs> than you just than you just not laughing. Like cowboy, cowboys over here dying. I know. La- I, I want to point out at you. I'm laughing yeah. at Father yeah. Michael <laughs> because he's giving an example of bears and then goes in their culture. <laughs> <laughs> he just anthropomorphizes bears. Father Father, Father yeah. Maximus um, so sweetly points out to me when he's laughing because of something I've said. Um, he very politely points out, I would never laugh at you. I'm laughing because of you. <laughs> <laughs> um, so there, and then what, what was Back the, to bear culture. Yeah, <laughs> back bear. to bear culture. Um, so, so this is, you know, again, ha- however this works, there's always exceptions. There's always diff- various rules um, of how these, of how even human cultures, how, how there, there's an order to protect, an order to guide, an order to find wisdom in, in various cultures. And I don't know if we want to get into it now. We're already at 32 minutes. Um, but the, there's, maybe we get this another time, but there, there is a very fascinating thing about the, what we've talked about before about among clergy, when Father Nathan and I ministered together, um, we, would at, we would quite often do things like, hey, if someone's going to break into the room we're sleeping in, uh, we did this, we were, we were visiting oh, yeah. a parish one time. And, and we, so we, there's the room we're in has, has twin beds, one by the window, one by the door, right? And we're visiting a parish. And, and both of us decide to be the protector. So I go straight to the bed by the window. He goes straight to the bed by the door. And so, and we're both like, and I think you... It was like gave, the next day. You gave a, was it was the next day? The next you, day you we, gave, neither of us knew we were I think doing it that. was. Yeah, both of us were like trying to be the protector. So we both, and so the next day, Father Nathan, like one of us gave the other one a dig, like, oh, you went for the more protected. Or he's like, what are you talking about? I was like, if someone's going to break in here, they're going to come in through the window. He's like, what are you talking about? If they're going to break in, they're going to kind of come in through the door. <laughs> and so both of us just like found our little protective areas, like where we could be the protector. Anyway, so th- there's, there's different perceptions. There are different ways of, of seeing this. If, Again, if we were persecuted for our faith in this country, I really do believe we need some priests to die as martyrs. And you the priests are usually the first to go because they're the they're the leaders, they're the authorities. Like we need some priests to die as martyrs as a witness to the sacrifice of Jesus Christ. We need some priests to hide and administer the sacraments, you know, to to the, the lay people that are also hiding. So mm-hmm. there 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 is this in any 
living situation, culture, or whatever you want to call it, among animals and humans. I think there's a certain order that 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 is created by them to protect, be wise, go out and get food, and that there's all these these places. And then some of it is very very natural. Like men are are physically on the whole are physically stronger than women. Women. Um, babies are more dependent upon women than they are on men, you know, just by, by the nature of being fed, by the nature of the fact that they, their first nine months of life where we're in this woman listening to her voice and, you know, um, all these things. So th- there's these, these various orders in the way that things are created in these, in these cultures. So it, it wasn't a very interesting practice. Um, sorry, go ahead on the next thing. I didn't want to distract, but yeah, that's okay. What you were just saying actually fits really well into okay. what I wanted to share. So, Mother Gabrielle and I were talking about this recently. She read this book called The Lament of Eve. And I don't remember who wrote it uh, or who compiled it, but it's a, it's a, yeah. Have you heard of this book? Lament of Eve. Okay. Uh, Sorry, I was talking to Father Nathan. He shook his head. Um, The, are you looking it up, Father Michael? Okay. So it's a compilation of commentaries on the book of Genesis by church fathers. Cowboy found it. And, um, Johanna Manley or Johanna Manley. Um, <laughs> Great name. <laughs> Great name, Johanna. Um, <laughs> the Lament of Eve. Uh, so it's, it's specifically on Genesis 1 through 5. So this whole book is on the first five chapters of, of Genesis. And so there's this fascinating, fascinating um, commentary by these church fathers because Mother Gabrielle is expecting to read this and hear all of these church fathers talking about like, how men are great and women are awful. Like not actually is that, but that's often as we're reading the church fathers out of context, that's kind of the impression we can get. Right, literally and, like women who are like showing fortitude are called manly among yes. many church fathers. Yeah, so absolutely. It's understandable. And like it's in our, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so, but she said that wasn't the experience at all. When she's reading their their commentary on the first five chapters of Genesis, she was um, really pleasantly surprised by what they say about the the punishment that comes from the fall, and so in um, in Genesis three verses like fourteen through seventeen, fourteen through nineteen, some nineteen, something like that is when um, God says like because you have done this, this is what's going to happen. You know, this is where we have the the verse where God says to Eve, your urge shall be for your husband and he shall rule over you. And and he says to Adam, um, the the ground is going to be cursed and um, thorns and thistor, thistles it shall bear. And you're going to have to like work by the sweat of your brow and so on and so forth. And so the, the fathers in their commentary on these, on these um, verses say that before the fall, man and woman were, um, there was like a sameness, not sameness is the wrong word. Oh man, I shouldn't have, I should have been much more delicate in my language here. Um, But that men and women are still equal in dignity, of course, today. Um, But the differences have been amplified because of the fall. And that here's the fascinating part what was given to them as punishment for the fall was what each, what man and woman each needed as medicine for what had happened in the fall. And so this is the specific thing that they need to be doing in order to heal from this rupture that had happened from the fall. So man failed to actually care for the garden and protect his wife in the way to protect the woman in the way that he should have. And so now in order to, um, to grow, to, to, to repent and redeem and, um, and heal from this wound, this is the medicine that he needs to, Mm. to have is to, um, to now till the ground, to work hard, work by the sweat of his brow for the, um, and, and to protect the woman. And the woman in the fall failed to submit to Adam. She failed to, um, to like allow him to protect. And she chose to, she, she grasped at this herself. And so in order to heal from this wound that had been caused in her, she now needs to practice submission in order to, um, to heal from this. And so like the fathers talk about how this, like what what God gives in response to the fall is 
to heal the specific wounds that were caused in man and woman each. Yeah. Can I can I give you two proof texts Please. just that come to mind as you're talking? So regarding regarding women, there's this really fascinating passage in Timothy where Paul says women are ch- saved through childbearing. Mm. Which is and you're kind of going where where Paul did you where why would you think that that is how a woman is saved. And that's part of what Genesis 3 says. Right. Exactly. Exactly. Mm. So there's some there's a correlation there which we could, if we had more time we could we could kind of uh, unpack a bit. But then the other proof text that I was thinking of also from Paul in regards to um men is he says that a man who doesn't provide his family is worse than an unbeliever. Whoa. Worse than an unbeliever. Uh-huh. Which is, again, you're going, where, Paul? Why would you think that is the thing that you should focus your attention on? So they both correlate very well with that, with wow. that Genesis Beautiful. reading. Yeah, yeah, that's really, yeah, that's really, really cool. Um, yeah. So anyways, I just thought that was um, kind of a, a fascinating thing and, and a way in which Perhaps this also explains like the interior state that was happening in the escape room is um, like God was in in these kinds of situations, if it's real danger or whatever, like the men are being like God has given them the nature um, to act as they need to act in order for their own salvation and for the, you know, um, so, yeah. Yeah, kind of going back to where the rub hits the road, I, I think it is something, and I've always said this just practically, when, you, when you're looking for someone to marry and share life with and share the mission of family with, I think it's good to, among the many other things, to say, what what weaknesses do I have that can actually be kind of softened and the, the rougher edges rounded out by the person I'm attracted to? And, and, and so I identify my own strengths and weaknesses and, and then she identifies her strengths and weaknesses and we, and we can see how the complementarity can be there as far as her weaknesses I can you know, soften through my strengths and then the other way around. And then I, so within this, culture, I'll use the word again, within the culture of the family, um, when we're going to raise children, when we're going to we're going to have a good life, a, a home that actually uh, facilitates a life of faith and holiness for the children. Because um, my, my parents, my dad led in a very specific way by being cool, calm, collected, kind of quiet, working really, really hard um, at, at, at a job that he probably was not his favorite thing in the world, but certainly had aspects of it. Um, and then just being a, being a rock and a foundation. My mom was definitely the one who was the spiritual leader who talked more things like this, but she led prayer every night, you know, and we, we, we and it worked, it worked very, very well um, with these two things. Um, so yeah, we, we, we kind of find within while acknowledging our own, and this is what our society today doesn't understand. Like you have to acknowledge the strengths that are actual strengths and, and not somehow force an egalitarianism, a force, a, a sameness mm-hmm. on, on everybody, or you're going to be denying the fact that, that, that when two people come together, they're called to mission together, not just because you need companionship, but actually because a family ideally needs both. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Complementarianism. Yeah, it's exactly. Short, that's- yeah. And that, 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 that just makes sense. Um, can I suggest something, Mother? Yeah. I, I, w- I, I w- also wanted to know if... Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. I was going to say, if we can do maybe one minute with Cowboy Woman with Valeria and then end yes. with Maddie. Yeah, okay. that would be great. So Maddie can think about what she wants to Always say. exceptions, <laughs> always exceptions. Okay, yeah. Cowboy, any, any thoughts on any of this, but especially escape room experience? You were a different escape room, but still. <laughs> yeah, we didn't have nearly the... Terror. The terror <laughs> um, you experienced. Um, no live actors. Um I mean, I, I, I commented last night, I'll go more on our discussion last night than on my experience in the escape room because it wasn't quite the same, it was just that the discussion of when you talked about the differences and the, the way in which men and women choose to sacrifice, mm. I, I brought up that I think objectively, if a child in the concept of a family is going to lose a parent and keep one, that and it's shown most explicitly in infancy that that parent is the mother. The one that they need to keep. Yeah. yeah. And so the, it is more apropos that the father does step out in front 
for the for both the reason you mentioned before of the ability to potentially win whatever the battle may mm-hmm. be, but also in salvation of the continued growth of the family itself. Mm-hmm. Um, and so that's that's my yeah. And and I and I do think that this I'm going to put this out there. I probably shouldn't do this, but like I would love to do an entire podcast. But don't hold me to it. Sorry, mother. Um, on on that because that that was a thought I had after the woman's body podcast was maybe that the gift and Father Nathan had a different perspective on this with with uh, some tribe. But um, but with the the gift of we'll try to bring you back in for that one, Father, um, among others. But um, but the uh, like with within the tribe there is a uh, maybe men are are called to be the grain of wheat that falls to the ground and dies to produce life, and they actually like like exhaust their body to the fact of complete self gift, like Ephesians five, right? Like die on the cross for their wife, and so so they they sacrifice by by um, allowing their body to be destroyed and sacrificed, whereas women sacrifice and die and allow life to come forth by actually preserving their bodies. And this this is why I talked about the, the mother of God's body is in heaven. Her body is preserved and she is obviously the ultimate mother. So women's bodies are preserved or men's bodies are kind of lost. But then of course we all get our bodies back to the resurrection. But that, that may be an overly generalized way of, of saying this, but that's also um, why, again, in, in the, oh, we talked about it last night, I'll go into it again, but in the book Gates of Fire, um, one of the reasons why they choose those 300 men by Stephen Pressfield, by the way, great book, why they choose those 300 men to go and the suicide mission to kill as many of the enemy as possible so that, that, that the city would be, would be preserved was that these families had to have a male heir to carry on the name, but also had to have a very strong wife because she was going to rebuild the culture because mm-hmm. he was dead. Mm-hmm. So there's something about the, the man um, sacrificing himself to be ended for the sake of the family and, and the, the wife sacrifices sometimes to preserve herself for the sake of the family. And it, the, both of those are sacrifices in different ways. One's like, one's like the you know James and John. James, one of the first martyrs, right? John actually was not martyred, the only apostle that wasn't martyred for the sake of taking care of the mother of God. Mm-hmm. Sorry, Valeria, um, any thoughts? Oh, sorry. We're going to have Maddie go next, actually. Okay. okay. Then Valeria? Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, I just, I feel like I should clarify that I probably would be terrified if it was a real situation. Uh-huh. Like, I think knowing that it was fake, I'm able to more like intellectualize it and just be like, this is a game. We should start by saying you were not. I mean, I was a not different, in this, yeah, escape I was in room, different but, escape room. But, but you were still not terrified. Like I wasn't scared. Okay. Ours wasn't that scary, but I don't, I think like knowing that it was fake and just focusing on the puzzles and like mm. moving like more into like the like intellectual part of it, like removes like some of the emotion mm. um, for me. But also kind of going back to the culture you were talking about, like my culture, my family, like my dad's law enforcement. So I was raised like, always being aware of my surroundings and like your head's always on a swivel. Like I'm just very much more like aware of like what situation I'm in, I think, than most people. So like I think I'm less afraid because I see things coming. I was um, thinking of that when they were talking, when Father Michael was talking about him and Father Nathan like choosing which bed. bed to sleep in. I was like, Maddie would absolutely do the same thing. <laughs> yeah, I did the same thing for the bed. Well, I put the bed for your retreat. Like we made uh-huh. sure it's like, when you first walk in the door, it's not like what you would see first. <laughs> because like, I just, that's just how my brain works. she's a cop's daughter. You agree that the door is where the bad guy is. <laughs> <laughs> Correct. <laughs> typically. So, typically so, speaking. This is, so this argument, by the way, when I was a kid, when we were 10 years old, our house was broken into and they stole everything and they came in through the window. Uh-huh. So this was mm-hmm. probably a very, a very like PTSD moment for me where I'm always imagining the bad guy coming in through the window. Mm-hmm. Break the glass coming through the window. So that's now my excuse. Now we're Michael's insecurities. Okay. <laughs> um, <laughs> but yeah, so this I think like just being- insecurities podcast. <laughs> <laughs> just being raised with like, no, like being aware of like the, like the bad that can happen. Like it's kind of like the thing if you like assume you might be a victim, like you won't, you have a less chance of being one. Just yeah. like being aware of like what's going on and stuff. So I think bringing that into something like an escape room, like A, I know it's fake and B, like- I'm just like confident that I would see something coming. Yeah. Which I wish we had gotten more into uh, this concept of reacting this way, even while knowing it's fake, because we didn't really crack that open. Although I honestly don't have much, I think, to like, I don't know how to respond to that. Like, what yes, was I know the it was image fake. you yes, gave, I, though. You gave a great image last so night. So I, I, what I said to Father Nathan, and I, there was another image um, that we were talking about this morning. But what I said to Father Nathan when he was so baffled by this, like, how how could you do it, like, even knowing that it's fake? Or how could you still be afraid? Is that um, 
like this is this happens every time we sin, right? Like when not every time we sin, when it's a sin that's a very conscious choice, um, we we might like know that this isn't going to make me happy. We might know that we're going to regret this. We might it happens when we overeat. It happens when we have too much sugar. You know, like we know we're not going to feel good from this, and intellectually we would say don't do this but then we choose to do it anyways and so there there is something about like our our will versus our um and this is in the context of you know it's fake you know they're actors yeah. you know the room is telling you but, but you're still reacting very viscerally and humanly to yeah. the situation yeah and and i think part of it too is there's got to be like i think there's probably this delay between like the brain like knowing that something um is fake overall, but then in each moment when the scream happens or something, like I have to remind myself that it's fake every time, you know, it's kind of like when you have a really bad dream about someone, like you got, you had this huge fight in a dream and then you see them the next day. I don't know if you guys have ever had this experience. I've had this experience of like, I have to keep reminding myself through the day. No, I'm not actually mad at them. I'm not like it's, but the, the emotions just store up. Or when there was that thunderstorm that I was talking about of like Olivia and I, a few weeks ago, almost died in a thunderstorm. It was really traumatic. Anyways, and then the first thunderstorm that happened after that, even though we were safely in the living room at the monastery, that first thunderclap, both of us, just our entire body tenses up. Um, And it's just like an involuntary response, like a physiological response. So, um, all right, Valeria, your thoughts. Um, I wanted Maddie to go first because I wanted to jump back with like, from what she was saying in Cowboy, so my usual temperament also was not in the like really scary escape room. I had the easy one. Um, my usual temperament is not like being super like submissive or whatever. Like I'm usually very independent and like don't like to work with people. Like I like to do very kind of like lead into what I'm what I'm doing and kind of like be in charge of that. So like now reflecting on that, I think it's really interesting that like because also Maddie was the exception and I kind of just took the general. Um, temperament of that like I just found myself like just following cowboy or following Maddie and I'm like oh I need some light oh okay I'll go get the light or if it was like oh the keys and like (laughs) also there was there was this one part where it was like a drawer (laughs) filled with like keys like 40 keys and (laughs) there was this like electric switch and one of those 40 keys opened it and they were just like doing whatever they were just like okay Valer just figure this out and I was like okay and so in my panicked like mode I was like (laughs) I'm <laughs> going one by one in these 40 keys <laughs> trying to open the lock. And then Cowboy, Cowboy comes back and he goes, I was like, oh, got it. And they're like, okay, yes. And then Cowboy comes back and he goes, oh, that's, it's labeled. <laughs> All of them are labeled. So yeah, I couldn't think, Greg. I was just like freaking out. So I just think, I think it's really interesting to see how, because Maddie and Cowboy are both like leaders in that. Mm-hmm. Um, I just was very just fluid with like what I was doing and very like scared and like I don't know that's usually not how I am so I just thought that was interesting sorry anymore that's all okay I, it is very interesting because I've seen this in the presbyterate Father Nathan you probably the same same it's seen the same thing in our parishes we are the alphas like we we have to be alphas. We we have to guide. We are the we're, we're the father. We we lead. We people. as in the parish priests. We as in the parish priests. Exactly. We have to be that. We have to lead. We have to make decisions. We have to care for the people. We have to do this stuff all the time. But when you get a bunch of priests together, it's it's very interesting to see who kind of takes on that role and who doesn't, and how you discern who that is. Mother, I always tell the story about you. You were you know. She went to the School of Mines in in Boulder in uh, Golden, Colorado. Like that's full of valedictorians. So when you get all these valedictorians and they all show up at school and they're all like, "Why I, am I not the valedictorian I anymore? The How come we're not all school? valedictorians?" Right, yeah. exactly. <laughs> so in other words, it, it is interesting to see Valeria that you are normally a very independent leader type person, but but in in various situations we kind of assess. Hopefully, we assess and don't just out of pride try to you know grab the bull by the horns. We actually assess what's the most, what's the necessary course of action. Who's best at the job for this specific thing right now? And it actually is a sign of a really good society to say, "I'm not the best at this thing, so you take over this thing. I'm going to take over this thing." And a good leader, of course, is the one who is able to kind of discern gifts and strengths of each person and say, "You take that. You take that. You take that." So there's nothing wrong with taking a step back and saying, "I'm not." 
at my best right now. This person seems to be at their best right now. So I'm going to let them even tell me what's best to do right now if they think I can do it. So yeah, it's, it's a very interesting practice, escape rooms in general, probably for saying how do people who may have different, different roles in their friend group, whatever it is, fit into a situation like this. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you have to like imagine, you know, if you're in Delta Force, right? Yeah. Or, or you're Navy SEAL. Yeah. Every one of those guys are yeah. alphas. Yeah. Like, and, and right. Three, every one of those guys is an right. alpha. Right. But they get together and they go, okay, which one of us needs to be alpha here? Yeah. Which one of us needs to do this job? Yeah. And they and they figure it out. And they're not so prideful that they're willing to put their lives in the line. Yeah. In order to keep that alpha status, yeah. once they realize, no, but this guy has to be the one. In Christ, you have to do this. In Christ, the strongest, most powerful person is is actually the one who serves the most and is the most humble. So it, it really is a flipping. I said, like humility and service actually serve and empower. To, to find good leaders and to find those who kind of or have earned authority or, or live authority anyway. Yeah. You know, Cowboy always um, makes fun of us because uh, anytime we've said that we're going to do a short episode, it's a regular length episode and that just happened to yep, me. That's okay. Okay, great. Can I, can I make one suggestion for your next episode? Yes. I think you need to get into like sloth and butterfly culture. I think you guys are going to uncover a lot. Oh, fear culture. I was like, so did, so did I. <laughs> okay. Sloth culture, the DMV. Okay. Um. <laughs> Sorry, another movie reference, I know. like Squirrel. Yeah. Um, great. Shh. Can everyone just give like a brief prayer intention? One word prayer, or yeah, one phrase like, prayer just, intention. Yeah. Um, I'm supposed to start, right? Because it's my episode. I should have thought of this ahead of time. Um, Please pray for Father Nathan Simeon's family. Father Michael? Um, I'm going to ask you to pray for Mother Natalia, who's pandering a lot and trying to say things just to get approval from other people in the room. (laughs) I'm just oh. kidding. Oh. <laughs> wow. Totally kidding. Pray for my pray for um Danny and Nat, please. Okay. <laughs> Mother is bright red. <laughs> <laughs> Maddie, what's your prayer intention? My prayer intention is actually for Mother Natalia and for her <laughs> retreat. Thank you. This week. <laughs> Father Nathan Simeon. Okay, my prayer intention is for uh Metropolitan Kalistos Ware, who yeah. recently passed. His soul. Amen. Sunday. Um, I didn't know. Yeah. Oh, Valeria. My prayer intention is for two like family decisions that I'll be discerning sometime next come upcoming months. So just pray for that and also for Melinda Natalia's retreat and for Maddie and Steubenville and her work. Cowboy. My prayer intention is for my brother Steven and his son Gabriel. Okay. Um, well, thanks, guys. It was really fun to be with all of you. It's always nice to be in person for recording, so that's great. And um, I've been wanting Father Nathan Simeon to come on the podcast for a long time, so I'm really glad. Um, Thank you. I love it's you guys. Pleasure. You're great. Uh, Father Nathan Simeon, would you be willing to give us all a blessing and our listeners? Absolutely. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May he cause his countenance to shine upon you. And have mercy on you. Amen. 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 May the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen.